Yo, it's Duff for the Cloud Chaser TV, man. We back up in this thing again, you dig? Hey, man, we got some news to report when it comes down to this whole old block situation. If you're not familiar, um, old block, you know, was raided by the feds the other day. And um, they linking a few of them in connection with the shooting on Oak Street with the rapper FBG Duck. Now, um, you know, the footage that I'm about to play for you, if you're not, if you already haven't uh, watched part one, Y'all definitely check out part one, but this is part two. And this is a little bit more outline of um, what the Fed saying that they got. And this is actually a bun hearing. And, you know, once all this gets out, you're going to see that he was denied bun, bun and you're going to see the reason why. But um, y'all get in the comments and y'all let me know what y'all think, man. It's definitely the Cloud Chaser TV. Back up in this thing again, you dig? If you haven't already subscribed, subscribe right now, family. Share this on Facebook and Twitter. Gang. Mr. Offer returned, did in fact return the vehicle shortly after the murder on August 4th. So I submit that the evidence against Mr. Offer is substantial in this case. And so coming to the history and characteristics of Mr. Offer, I want to turn to the pretrial bail report and I'll start with Mr. Offer's address, looking at page two of the report as relayed to pretrial. I think this is really important and this is gonna this is gonna come up in the documents that I've tendered to the court and that I've tendered to Mr. Somerville as well. Mr. Offer, government believes, has made statements to pretrial, the people who would supervise him if the court were to give him pretrial release in this case, he's made statements to them that are not true with respect to where he lives. Looking at page two of the report, first full paragraph, Mr. Offer maintained that he's a lifelong resident of this district and had lived at the address, which is listed on page one of the report for the past two years. Mr. Offer's mother and sister told pretrial that wasn't true. He didn't live at that address and he lived somewhere else. The FBI, throughout the course of this investigation, received court approved authorization to use investigative methods to figure out where Mr. Offer was in fact residing and it was not this address that's listed on page one the report. It's close to the address where he was arrested. I say close to the address where he was arrested because the, the FBI again through investigative methods figured out which unit Mr. Offer was living in and during the course of this arrest which with respect to Mr. Offer's arrest spanned about 40 minutes to an hour. We're knocking on the door of that residence. Mr. Offer was not there. He was in a different residence which was upstairs away from that one. Uh, did not come out easily. The FBI, as reason to believe, turned off his phone while they were knocking on the door of that other residence, but ultimately figured out where he was. Uh, and again, relating to the address that Mr. Offer would say is where he lived in page two of the report, I submitted documents to the court. I tendered them to Mr. Somerville. Let's just call them Exhibit 1 and 2. I'll, I'll refer to the one that is a small business administration application, at least a small portion of it as Exhibit 1, and a Bank of America statement as Exhibit 2. I think this is relevant to the question of Mr. Offer's history and characteristics, particularly with respect to where he's living, because if Your Honor were to look at Exhibit 1, there's an address listed on this application, which is neither the address where he was arrested uh, earlier this week or the address where he told pretrial he's been residing. For the past two years, it's listed as both his personal address on the left side of the page and a business address on the right side of the page. Mr. Offord made some statements to pretrial again during this interview with respect to his employment. So, looking down the first sentence under that that sub paragraph. It says Mr. Offord explained that he's been unemployed since 2019 and is financially supported by family. Page one of Exhibit One indicates that Mr. Offord represented to the Small Business Administration that he was a small business owner, that he had seven employees, that he had a clothing and apparel business that grossed $73,000 in the past 12 months of the state of the application, which was June 24th of last year. And so if that's true, it's not something that he represented or told to pretrial about what his employment situation was and the statements that 
he's been unemployed since 2019. Again, if the statements in this application are true, those statements in the pretrial or that he made the pretrial are not true. So either way, one of these things can't be true. I, I will proffer to the, to the court, though, that Mr. Offer did, in fact, receive some money with respect to submitting this application. So if you look towards the bottom right-hand side of Exhibit 1, it says that there are losses due to the disaster in the amount of $8,000. If you flip over to Exhibit 2, the very first line, it appears that there was a deposit from the Treasury. It says SBAD, Small Business Administration, Treasury, in the amount of $7,000 on or about June 25th of last year. So again, I think this relates to Mr. Offer's character for truthfulness with respect to representations he has made to pretrial about where he lives, representations he's made on a loan application to, to the government. And I told you at the start that I was foreshadowing a bit with respect to the application for the car. If Mr. Offer's statements are true to pretrial, that he was unemployed or has been unemployed since 2019, those were not the statements that he made in the loan application in or about July 28th, 2020, which ultimately led to the dealership requesting that Mr. Offer return a vehicle to them. So all of those things go to Mr. Offer's character for truthfulness and whether he'd be a good candidate for pretrial release, reporting to pretrial. There's some other information, and I, I relay this to Mr. Somerville as well. These are not exhibits, but when Mr. Offer was arrested in that other apartment, the owner of that residence unit gave the FBI consent to search it, and they recovered, the FBI recovered some items that the owner of that residence unit indicated belonged to Mr. Offer, including two bottles of suspected promethazine, hydrochloride, for the cloud people chaser call TV. it coating syrup, about 136 grams, now some credit cards in Mr. Offer's name, about $1,500 in cash, 10 40 caliber Smith & Wesson rounds, uh, 40 caliber Smith & Wesson magazine, pills in the name of two other individuals, two different bottles of pills in the names of other individuals, four different cell phones, so what, one iPhone, a different iPhone, an Alcatel cell phone, a ZTE cell phone, a digital scale, about 300 grams of suspected marijuana all within that, that residence. So again, this would go to what well, Mr. Offered, in fact, living in a, in a third place, the place where he was arrested. Uh, but certainly there are some contraband in that residence with respect to Mr. Offered. He's a convicted felon, and I'm going to move on to that in a bit. And so certainly should not have 40 caliber ammunition uh, within his possession. I do want to, as I foreshadow, want to move on to Mr. Offered's criminal history. Again, I think it, it, it bears in favor of detention in this case. Some of his criminal history is admittedly dated, uh, but I think it, it tells a story because there's a consistent pattern of either bond forfeitures or difficulty complying with the terms of post-conviction court supervision. So looking at page three of the report, there is a misdemeanor charges. Again, these are dated 2008, but there's a bond forfeiture there. We went on to page four. The report, again, a bit dated, but more serious conduct. At the very bottom, there's an aggravated battery of a government official, which is a felony. Mr. Offer pleaded guilty 